Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are having an excellent day today. For this week's video, we're gonna tackle 15 of my personal favorite guitar myths that make us all look a little crazy. Let's get started. For myth number one, we're going to jump straight into the deep end of the crazy pool. Nitro finishes sound better than poly. Nitro, poly. Nitro, poly. Nitro, poly. Nitro, poly. Now, I've been fortunate enough to play on all sorts of different guitar finishes over many, many years, and I can tell you this with certainty. Pickups are 90% of the guitar's tone. The other 10% is split between 100 different factors, of which nitro versus poly should be zero. You shouldn't even talk about it. Obsessing over it makes you look crazy. Now, one other thing I'll quickly mention is that I picked up this Epiphone Les Paul used for 350 bucks, put in a set of P-Rails, which gives you single coils, P90s, humbucker series parallel, all those sounds and I compared it up against my highest end guitars in a blind test. Now this guitar is encased in a massively thick uh, coating of poly, but it's one of my favorite guitars and kicks butt on so many of my other instruments. So if you think you can tell the difference between this and a bunch of my high end guitars in a blind test, follow the link above, try your luck. Now myth number two is that vintage pickups sound much better than modern pickups. And we all sort of attach this mystique or this mojo to 50s and 60s pickups. And instead of the Lady of the Lake emerging with Excalibur for King Arthur, we imagine her coming up with Hendrix's Strat or a set of PAF pickups from the 50s, right? And when those vintage pickups go for like 500 to 1200 bucks, you better be sure they sound better than a set of Seymour Duncans, right? And the truth of the matter is there was just vast inconsistencies back in the day. Some of them sounded great, some of them sounded like crap. Someone would be winding a pickup and go out for a smoke break, come back, finish the pickup and be like, yeah, it looks good. You know, it might have been overwound, underwound, whatever. Someone would go on a bathroom break, come back, Meh. Let's package these up. Looks good to me, right? Just very inconsistent. So you can't be sure that a very, very expensive set of vintage pickups is gonna sound any better than a modern set of pickups. All right, favorite myth number three is that heavy gauge strings give you super thick tone. And certainly it makes your guitar feel different, right? You have to dig in, you kind of got to fight that instrument, but you can just like lay into it, which gives it a different feel, but does it give it a different sound? I don't think so. So here's a list of some of our favorite guitar players playing light gauge strings, nines or eights. Here we go. Hendrix, nine, Chuck Berry, eight, Jimmy Page, eight, Van Halen, nine, James Hetfield, nine, Billy Gibbons, eight, BB King, eight, Dude had monstrous tone, right? Knopfler, uh, Gary Moore, Angus Young, Randy Rhodes, Steve Vai, Satriani, all on nines, right? Some of those guys have some of the most epic, you know, huge, expansive guitar tones available on super thin gauge strings. Don't worry about the gauge, play what feels right. Now, if you guys would like to see me do a real world string gauge test, let me know in the comments below. I'd be happy to do that. Now myth number four is one of my personal favorites, probably because I love thin line tellies, even if they are a tad garish. But either way, it's hilarious to watch demos or listen to you know, forums or people in music stores describe the difference between a thin line and a solid body. You'll hear words like airy or spacious or unique high end. And you know they're looking for words to sell you a guitar. What the F-hole does is it makes the guitar lighter. That's what it does. It doesn't matter what kind of guitar it's on. Um, chambering, F-holes or whatever, it makes the guitar lighter, that's what it does. Enjoy the weight savings. Yes, we have arrived at Maple versus Rosewood. So, the myth goes, this little slab of Rosewood on top of your maple neck makes all the tonal difference in the world. So, if you want a guitar that is warm, that is natural sounding, that notes kind of just have this subtlety and this really interesting warm vibe, go with the rosewood. If you want something snappy and bright with tons of attack, go with the maple. This is a huge decision for your guitar and you must know which one you like the sound of best. Well, here we go. Let's do a blind test for you guys. Same guitar, same strings, no reverb, no compression, straight out of my amp, unprocessed, blind test, here we go.
there you guys go. A great reminder just to pick fingerboard material based on what looks good with your body and feels good to play on, whether that's rosewood, maple, ebony, whatever. Don't go chasing tone wood. It's sort of a dead end and it really doesn't matter in any practical setting. Now, as for the results, guitar number one was the rosewood fingerboard and guitar number two was the maple. And, you know, if I had to sit down and analyze it over and over again, I think, you know, the rosewood was actually a, a touch bit snappier than the maple. And some of that's maybe down to my playing inconsistencies, but that's the way it is. Wood is unpredictable and the amount that it affects the tone is minimal. Now myth number six brings us right back into the deep end of the crazy pool. We're talking about certain famous guitar players who swear they can tell the difference in their pedals between a power supply or nine volt batteries. Not only that, but different brands or types of nine volt batteries. So we're talking about some next level stuff here. Stuff so irrelevant that it makes zero difference to even talk about it. So this myth is just hilarious. Um, use a power supply if you can. It's better for the environment anyway than chewing up a bunch of nine volts. Other than that, spend time practicing. Don't even worry about this one. This one's crazy. Warm vintage, warm, warm vintage tone. Warm vintage tone. Warm vintage tone. Where have I heard that phrase before? Oh yes, on every single pickup manufacturer's website. Listen to music from the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, and the 60s. Where's this warm vintage tone? It's bright, it's cutting, it's Gretsch, it's Telecaster, it's Stratocaster, it's Surf, it's Big Band, it's early rock and roll, it's Bebop. Where's the warm vintage tone? Stop using that phrase to sell me pickups and use something accurate. Now myth number eight really doesn't have anything to do with us looking crazy or like the overly eccentric musicians that we are. It's more of just a general misconception. So here goes the myth. Compared to a Strat bridge, a Tele bridge has more treble, has more bite, is thinner, um, all those kind of things. And that's just not true. Compared to a Strat pickup, a Tele pickup has more low end, it has more overall frequencies and honestly is a fuller sound. So a Strat bridge is built very different than a Tele bridge pickup. Um, totally different construction, but the Strat actually sounds thinner, a little bit more compressed and has fewer overall frequencies. So common misconception, um, let's take a listen to these guitars. <laughs> So now you know if you need a big, powerful, full sounding, single coil tone, grab a Telecaster bridge, you'll love the tone. Now myth number nine is an interesting one, sort of an unwritten rule of guitar. And it goes something like this. If you play a certain genre, you need to buy a certain type of guitar. And nowadays that's just not true. We don't want to be pigeonholed like that anymore. But you know, if you go on a forum or something and they're like, oh, you like, Satriani and Vi, definitely you need an Ibanez or you like ACDC, grab the SG. Doesn't matter if, you know, you might hate playing on an Ibanez or an SG. They might be like the worst guitars for you. Um, what you want to do is find a guitar that you like the look of, but most importantly, sounds good, versatile, has a great neck profile. You know, you like the frets, everything about it you like. You're going to play better. You're going to play more often instead of being like, oh, I like metal. I have to get this guitar. And then you realize that everything about it is just wrong for you, right? So we wanna break free from those pigeonholes and pick the guitars that work best for you. If an SG works the best for you, play jazz on an SG, play country on an SG, I don't care. Play, play bluegrass on an Ibanez if, if the Ibanez is the best fit for you. Nowadays, you know, with amps and EQs, and I mean, last week I, I demoed that exchanger pedal that turns pickups into a, a totally different sound. Really interesting stuff. Um, guitars are so versatile now. Don't let yourself get pigeonholed. Pick one that you play the best on. All right, enough ranting about that. Let's get back into the deep end of the crazy pool. Here we go. Small Strat headstock versus the big Strat headstock. People claiming it changes your tone. People claiming it adds sustain. It adds mass. All these different things. Uh, sounding a little crazy. Here's the reason for it. First 20, 20 odd years of the Strat had the smaller headstock. 
Um, then CBS bought out, bought out Fender, went to the bigger headstock size. What was the reason? Was there some sort of tonal deficiency of the small one? Were the engineers trying to find a better sounding guitar? No, no, no. It came down to marketing. Surprise, surprise. So they wanted a bigger headstock so that they could make a bigger Fender logo. They wanted more real estate on which to advertise. That's why the big Fender headstock exists. All right, we got a good boil going on here, you guys. I think you know this myth. Boiling your guitar strings brings back their tone. I swear, I'm not crazy. I'm just gonna cook my strings. Yeah, I'm, I'm cooking my guitar strings. This is what's happening here. This is what my life has devolved into. There's just gotta be a better way to save seven bucks. But in the end, all those strings that you boiled still have the kinks in them from being wound around the post. When you put them back onto an instrument, that's gonna be a really weak area because it's been kinked so many times. Uh, just go buy a new set of strings. It's gonna play better and sound better. Now myth number 12 is true bypass versus buffered bypass. Now in the past, buffered bypass was like a swear word. You did not want any of the pedals on your board. They were cheap, they were crappy. Everything had to be true bypass. The marketing machine was glorious and they would upcharge you for you know true bypass. If a pedal didn't have it, it was crap. Well, turns out that's not entirely true because if you're running 20 foot cable into your pedal board and maybe 10 feet or even more of patch cables, 15 or 20 feet back out to your amp, well, you're getting close to 50 feet of cable and you're gonna notice the high end drop on that. So what you actually needed was a buffer. Now people would buy separate buffers, you know, because they didn't want buffer bypass pedals for some reason. But anyway, uh, totally different story. Um, you need at least one buffered bypass pedal in your board um, to boost the signal so you don't lose all that high end either at the beginning or the end of your pedal board. Now myth number 13 comes more from manufacturers and less from players, although some players might repeat this um, just because, again, it's the marketing machine going wild. These are noiseless pickups. These are Fender Enforce, the latest generation from Fender. Hopefully I'll have a demo of this up against a regular single coil uh, soon, but so goes the marketing. These babies are gonna sound just the same as your regular single coils. That is not true. That's not to say they don't sound great. I've played on lots of single coil noiseless pickups. I think they have their own voice and they sound great, but they do not sound like regular single coils. Don't buy into the myth. If you don't have an American made guitar, you're wasting your time and you're wasting your money. Well, don't waste your time with hot takes like that. It's absolute garbage. It's not true anymore. Don't let people look down on you because of where your guitar was made. A CNC machine has no idea if it's in Indonesia, Korea, China, or Cleveland. So what does matter is the fit and finish, and what does matter is quality control. And both of those metrics have been absolutely shooting through the roof. You know, the, the Squire Classic Vibe series is like, you know, the poster boy for Chinese guitars, right? Absolutely amazing guitars. And, you know, anything in Indonesia in the six to $800 range easily rivals anything made in the States. It's just the way it is. So don't waste your time with garbage like that. Bust the myth, grab a guitar that you like, that you wanna play, spend your time practicing rather than arguing. Let's end number 15 with a bang. This is our Tonewood debate. So this is a garage sale guitar that I rescued. Uh, it was unplayable when I found it, so I decided it's gonna be the perfect candidate to do some experiments on. So we cut up the body and took audio clips along the way. If you missed that video, I will put a link to that above. But in the end, it's a neck with just sort of like that core strip of body. Sustain didn't change in a meaningful way. Tone did change surprisingly, but again, not in a meaningful way. This sounds like a perfectly beautiful guitar. You guys heard the highs, the lows, everything sounds great on it. And like I said, it's just a neck and a little bit of a stick. So all that to say, don't sweat the small stuff. Don't worry about tone wood, grab your guitar, practice. That's gonna be the biggest difference in your musical education.
Thanks so much for watching you guys. You can order the minimalist I like guitars t-shirt in the video description below. Check that one out. Other than that, let's dial back the crazy you guys and let's focus on the things that matter, which is playing the most beautiful, amazing instrument ever created. Have a great week you guys. We'll see you next time with a new video.